welcome to another episode of Caribbean Current, a series where we spark conversation within the Caribbean community about lots of topics, specifically in the space of music and culture. So today we have one that hits home for a lot of us because I don't know about you, but I'm pretty over this pandemic, staying home all the time. I would love to experience a carnival right now. And there are a lot of people who share that sentiment. And what we're seeing is because people are, they just fatigued from the pandemic and then you have promoters who need to make money. You have people in the entertainment industry who need to make some money right now. People are stretching the bounds of what is safe and having events that are kind of putting our community at risk. So we wanted to have a conversation about that to talk about how do we still support the Caribbean entertainment industry, which is a big part of our culture but at the same time, keep our community safe and make sure that within this pandemic, that there are the right protocols that keep us as a Caribbean collective safe and sound. So that's our topic for today. So I guess we could start off, oh, I didn't introduce us, my bad. I'm Marissa, founder of To Be Caribbean. We also have... Uh, so I'm afraid to go before Jason. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> it's Nyla, um, educator, activist, yeah, yeah. Yo, big up all the massive and crew, you know, it's so Jason Skywalker. We're there every time. I'll be a niceness, sweetness, loveliness, Caribbean muscle every single time. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So we know Jason was going to come with some excitement, but <laughs> that's good because that gives us the energy we need to talk about this very important topic. How do we keep Caribbean community safe in the midst of this pandemic, but still support our entertainment industry? Nyla. Tell us what you think, especially from the perspective of someone who attends events or maybe not during this pandemic. What are your thoughts on how we approach that? Well, um, that's a tricky one because, you know, uh, because we are Caribbean people living outside of the Caribbean in order to be culturally connected and stay connected with our Caribbean folk. You know, a huge part of how we do that is venturing out and going to these events, right? And being around people who we, people like us or Caribbean people. So for me, you know, I haven't been going anywhere, but I've seen other people go out. And like when Shinsia came to um, Atlanta the other day, mm. you know, yes, I saw that. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, type of thing. No social event, distancing. Before COVID events. <laughs> No right, this right. Thing. You know, no Spice, social distancing. Right, and Spice has her restaurant here, and you know, all these things I would love to go to, but I have to also use good sense. Well, it's good sense to me, you know, mm-hmm. or common sense. Common sense is not common. So, mm-hmm. for me, I would prefer to attend the more virtual events. You know, like I love the the verses that we had the other day with Bonte and Beanie. Well, it wasn't the other day; it was a while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I I love to participate in that kind of thing because even though Patrice I, and Allison, make sure you pick them up. Oh yes, oh, yes. Power. <laughs> yes. And you know, I'm a huge fan of Allison. So so to be able to see that kind of entertainment from my living room was you know was nice it was extra special but then and allison won just putting that out there oh absolutely but you know i i think jason you and i are clearly biased you know (laughs) clearly (laughs) clearly um but it would be still nice to be connected with your folks you know to be around them and to feel the vibe and not just having to feel the vibe from your living room so So yeah. that's that's a good point. Yeah. So so Jason, what are your thoughts about that whole connectedness? Because I think that's a big part of our culture, what Nyla was saying. So how do we get that same energy from virtual events? Well, first and foremost, let me, you know, correct something. Never bias. I'm a music connoisseur, I'm a DJ, I'm a selector, so I can't be biased. Oh, sorry, that dude. being I said all day, all day. Sorry. <laughs> I am biased. I go and just call it what it is. But right. <laughs> <laughs> that being said though, um, no, yeah, because, you know, all right, well, it, we, I, well, this topic I definitely got biased with because this is how I grew up. I, I know music must be filtered through the, through the um, response, the, the, the call and response of crowd and DJ. And DJ playing music in a manner that, or even artists performing music or DJ playing the music in a manner that connects with the crowd in a certain way. And that's what makes the song an integral part of either hit or just our, our lexicon of the culture and so on. 
Um, so this idea of, you know, looking at the screen, whether it be the verses where you're in your home or the interesting ideas where people can drive somewhere on, the, on a screen, I do, I do believe we'll lose something culturally with that. Um, and it's going to be this way for a while now because, you know, we're not going to see a real leadership change until January 20th. So I'm not going to do nothing until July. So we're not going to really see nothing. By the way, shout out to the Caribbean people in Georgia. It was your counties that were coming in strong for Biden and Harris. That well, being said. Let's talk, um, let's talk solutions because that's a good point, Jason. Like it is, it is an integral part of what we're doing. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of questions around that, right? So entertainment. Entertainers, sorry, can't travel. Um, promoters, they... they... So, so wait, before you go to that next point, entertainment uh-huh. can't travel, that's very unique to this whole thing. There are entertainers that for a while will not be able to travel. Right. And, you know, in terms of reggae, right off the bat, I can say Buja Bands and Beedham and Bones Killer, um, Cableton, they will not be able to travel in the near future. I think Wayne Marshall has a few more years where he can't travel. Um, so... The virtual thing actually works for them because they won't be able to get into the U.S. So um, okay, so that was part of the question I was bringing up, right? So you have those who can't travel for different reasons, but there's also the reality of we have not, we don't have as much data to say that Caribbean people participate in virtual events from a monetary perspective. Like they might be there, like you had the boosters and they have enough, you know, we having fun online, but to say I spend in ten dollars to see an event virtually, not necessarily. So then as a promoter, I stuck between a rock and a hard place because that's how I feed my family. Where Where is the solution? You know, I know I was speaking to a promoter recently, Choice, and one of his solutions was making sure his event was had a lot of COVID protocols in place, right? So they had hand sanitizers, they had markers for the social distancing, but you're still in an environment where you could interact with your people from far, you know, and you haven't, you still have the vibe that we are accustomed to as Caribbean people. So Is that a viable what, solution? But going back to what, um, what Nala just said, Trincia mm-hmm. dance, how are we going to be sure that people are going to follow the protocol? Right. That's one. Um, two, come on, we know our people. I mean, give them the opportunity to do what they were doing before. Wind up on each other, please. <laughs> yeah, it's a cultural that, thing. You know yeah. what I mean? And so if you're going to introduce something like that, you have to expect that people are going to want to be connected and go back to the old... The way it was before. How it was before because, you know, let's be real. This is how we stay connected as a people. You know, when you have carnival, that is the that is what you do. You wind up, right. wind up, wind up, and you touch the, the, people, the, the, you know? Carnival, the one time a year when the girl who wouldn't speak to you for the for the entire year, that day she wind up on you. Yes. Other than that, she's not talking to you. She passed you straight. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think as a promoter, Marissa, to answer that question, you know, I think it's we're gonna have to start being uh, very creative with how we do things. You know what I mean? I think there is there are ways of making money, but you can't do it the way we did it before. You know, maybe so, not. So, so I'm saying, I'm saying. Hold, hold on, hold on, Jason. Hold on, Jason. So maybe not have a, an event like a Shensia event. And and mm-hmm. I'm not hating on Shensia. I love. Uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of Shensia. I really wanted to see her, but but, but when I saw how they were doing it, I was like, mm, I'm good. Right. But if if they had had a Shensia event where it was like a drive up type of thing, you know, those um, mm-hmm. where you can in you're in the car, but you could still see her on stage type of thing. You know, me and my crew could have been in the car. You know, maybe participate in something like that. I might be open to something like that. That's that's a creative way of doing it, and she can still make her money. The promoter right. can still make make his his or her money. So that's so uh, so a big part of of, of our culture mm. is crowd participation, beating up the walls and beating up the stage, and literally being there with the artist. Like yeah, and. So the drive, um, the drive how, do, how do how do we how do we fill that void? Okay, so the drive up, you beat up the horn, mm-hmm. you know, you you're on top of the car, you know, you're still okay. making a noise, and you have your, you know, like in Jamaica where we have the Dutch pot cover them, you have the cover them, <laughs> boom, 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 you know, it's possible. And and I think that that goes to a bigger point, right? Like the reality is, we have to have a mind shift within the culture, even if it's temporarily. For, for our safety you know so it's like just the same way we can't go carnival right now 
you know, we can't do whatever other things we would do, have reggae, some fairs, those different events. Like, we just have to have this temporary mind shift that for the safety of my people, I might have to en enjoy the event from a car and just be the top of my, my car, with, you know? <laughs> for now, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. And I agree with you totally. So that's, and, and, and temporary is, is a strong word here because I do believe that this same country that put a man on the moon, that they can figure it out and get this thing done as they did when they beat the pandemic in 1918. I do believe that that will happen eventually. Um, I'm praying for that. Um, that being said, though, this is a great opportunity for a lot of things to happen that couldn't happen before. Even Thank you. us yep. doing Caribbean Current TV. Like, this is, if, if uh, as, as promo at the end of the day, you know, promoters are content creators in physical life. Right. Yeah, so, that's a good way to put it, yep. So let's 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 really take this opportunity of content creation online, bring in the Caribbean culture. We always talk about the Caribbean culture absent as a as a powerful entity. Maybe this is an opportunity to really make it happen that we really represent the entire region and people really get their stuff online that there can there is this content creation of online activity that we Absolutely. control and run it even like a network where because you're getting eyes, you can actually make money by charging. So, so you're, okay. Go ahead. you're, you're I'm just saying, if, if you can get eyes and then you get, you do advertising, that's one way. There's of course also the pay-per-view aspect of it, but you have to really make it cheap. I remember Erica Badu in the beginning of this uh, pandemic, she did a, a, a unsung, uh, not unsung, um, a cool six performance and charged people something like between 50 cents and a dollar. Right, and, and she make it like, up with volume, yeah. She had yeah. like 40, 50,000 people in one mm. night. Mm. God, she got more than what she'd be paid for to perform just by herself at an event. So, that's it. So just to flash out, go ahead, Nyla. No, I'm just saying it can be done. And I also think that we shouldn't just rely on, on this country to do it. I think uh, the Caribbean can be trailblazers in this, you know. We I want money. So, so, so that's what I wanted to talk about because to flesh out the conversation about solutions. So it is a level playing field right now, right? Everybody. Oh, 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 you're, oh, you're not talking about the pan. Oh, you're not talking about the pandemic. You're talking about the content creation. Sorry, sorry, I, I'm. Um, so, so level, level playing field. You know, everybody could participate. Even artists yes. who now coming up, they have an opportunity to shine. But we have to have the right things in place. For example. We have to have the right infrastructure in the islands in terms of technology to make sure we're competitive, to make sure that people outside could get a quality event. Because if you're charging people, they want to make sure they have quality. So, you know, like, for example, and, and when, we, and when we do. When, and we, let me finish. Let me finish. When Kess did his event um, recently, I mean, he didn't charge, but the production value of that event was amazing, you know, and he was able to package our culture in a way where anybody around the world wants to put, uh, experience it. So how do we replicate and to, and to, things to what like you just that said, all the time? And to, to what you just said, the, the verses with Beanie Bounty, that was all Jamaican production. So right. you just said something straight out of Jamaican, it can be done. So yes. Right. So how, how do we replicate it on a regular basis? How do we shift our, our mindset to know that we, in order for this to be a community oriented thing, then we have to, we have to pay to experience certain events, you know, because that's how they will make their money. Um, so, you know, we just have to think through as a collective how we make that happen. Because right now, I mean, we what, nine, ten months into this pandemic, it's at the point now where we have to see things come to reality and stop talking about it, which seems to have been happening for a long while, in order to keep us safe, you know? So, mm -hmm. with that, um, I know Genesis is like, you all need to shut up now. So, okay, so let's wrap it up real quick. What would you think is the, the next step we have to make? in order to have strong Caribbean virtual events. Nyla. Um, I think it's what you just said. I think uh, promoters and um, these content creators that we talk about need to have a mind shift and start thinking very differently of how to get these crowds to participate. It's all about who, who, you're, who you have performing and how you do it. You, you know, you have, to, you, you have to think holistically about um, not just pack it, having people coming in and putting themselves in a dangerous situation, but how to get them to be there where they're still enjoying the experience, but um, you're not putting them in any kind of danger. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, because not everybody is reckless. You know, not everyone 
it, there's people like me who actually want to be entertained but not not do it in a reckless way so right. it can be done if 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 you be a little bit more creative and open-minded with how that is done okay and you okay. will get the crowds you will get the crowds if you do it right look at look at what's worked we saw the verses work we saw the um the driving that um that that, that now talk about work look at what works enhance it and let's go yes and in all things make sure that we represent brand caribbean professionally because that's really important because now the global marketplace is open to us so we just need to make sure we're playing in that space and people recognize our talent so, caribbean current tv to be caribbean.com you yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for listening. This was the entire team to be Caribbean, Caribbean Current, talking about how we pivot as a community to make sure that we support our entertainment industry, but keep our people safe and our community safe. Let us know your thoughts. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Just chime in and let us know what, what your thoughts are. Ooh, I just said chime in, but big up to the whole chime in team. They have a lot of great content as well, so make sure you check them out. Yeah, we'll see you next time. This is.